guys, this is Scott over at TheVersatileGuitarist.com. In this video, I want to show you how to play an old Russian folk song called Tum Balalaika. Tum Balalaika is an old Russian Jewish folk song, and like a lot of old traditional songs, the harmony is fairly simple. What we're doing here is we're going to play in the key of A minor using a typical 1-4-5 progression. That's an A minor is the one chord, D minor is the four, E7 is the five, sometimes we'll see an F in there, we call that a flat six, but let's check out the whole arrangement and then we'll talk about how to play it. Okay, let's run through all the parts here. Now this is in the key of A minor, like I was saying, so we have an A minor chord. We're gonna see that here, and at the end we'll see it up here. And then we have a D minor chord, which we'll see this way, but sometimes we don't have to have all of our fingers down. And then we'll also see it like this, which I guess we could say is a D minor seven chord, or maybe it's an inversion of F, but let's say it's D minor. D minor might look like this, if we play the whole thing, but we can play this string open, since it's a D chord, so there's a proper D minor triad. We're going to put C on top, and then C down here. We'll come to that in a second. And then for E7, probably know that one. Sometimes we're going to play it like this, though. A little inversion there with G sharp in the bass. That would be called E7 over G sharp. And we'll see it like this sometimes. And we'll see the pinky here on D. There's just all these different ways to play E7 so that we can accommodate the melody. The only other chord that uh, I didn't mention is F right here. We'll see that one. If you're into the caged system, you might recognize that as a D form. This is an F note, so this is F major right here. At the beginning, we do have an A minor chord here. You can hold the whole thing like this, or just a little fragment of it, uh, whatever is easier for you. Sometimes, if you can recognize what the chord is, it's better to hold the whole thing, because if you accidentally hit another string, it's not wrong. If you accidentally hit, for example, in this case, the D string, and I fingered it like this, then it would sound wrong. But also, it allows you to flesh the song out, maybe make it fuller if you want, if you recognize what the chords are. So we have A minor like this. I believe I played it this way. And we're playing this classic waltz rhythm where we have our ring finger playing an upper note and thumb at the same time. And then on the second and third beats, these two fingers, your index and middle, playing two, three. So one, two, three, one, two, three. That would be a good little exercise for getting into this. I'm just going in between A minor and E7. Okay, so first measure again, we have one, two, three, and do it again. This time we're just playing the upper notes of that. We're gonna slide these two fingers up two frets. This is what we would call a guide finger down here. And then we come back again. On this next one, we're gonna jump over here to G sharp and play the low E string. Keep this finger down, the G sharp. We wanna hear that ringing out as we go F sharp, G sharp. So the fourth measure of the song is one, two, three. This is kind of tough here. We have to jump over to these two notes. You got a B here and a D there and the low E string. Play those together. I got this note with my index finger again. If that gives you trouble, because coming from here, it's kind of hard to jump over there. You might decide to only play the low E string and then wait for these till later, and that would be a great workaround. So that would look like this. This is measures four and five. One, two, three. Just play the low E string, put that down, and then get that down. That sounds just as good, and nobody would even notice. Here's what's written. One, two, three. Jump over. Two, three. Or you can go one, two, three, low E string. That's totally fine. And once you're there, we're on the next measure. Still there, we're going to slide these two down. There's a lot of guide fingers happening here where we want to slide them up. And that really is our ticket to making things sound smooth and feeling more stable. So we were here. And then we're going to slide the ring finger down. And your middle finger comes all the way here to the sixth string. And your index is on the first fret of the second string. And then slide that same thing up, just get rid of your index. So that measure's going. And then here, you might slide that same finger back if you like, or just come back to the chord we started with. 
and always be on the lookout for open strings. So here I'm on measure nine. One, two, open strings. That's our ticket to get to this next part more efficiently. So one, two, jump. And then we have that shape that I was saying is an F chord coming from the D form, except we're not playing the, the B string. So it's kind of easier. We're gonna play it like this. So we have, let your pinky be your guide finger up here. We can bar this. We don't have to bar it, but at the end of the measure, we're going to at least have to bar it there. So what I did in that video was I just did a half bar here. Jump down here to this A minor chord. Now we do have to play the full shape. This measure, I would play a full D minor chord and put your pinky down there as you do it. And we have this. Jump over to this fragment of E major. Instead of playing the whole thing, you just need to play a little piece of it. Although you can play the whole thing if you like. And then we have this. We can use a number of different fingerings here. We can do like we did it before or with these two fingers. Slide it back. As long as one finger stays on the string to keep us stable as we slide back and forth. And right, here's an A minor chord. One, two, three. And the second half of this is just a reiteration of that main melody, but with some variations. What's written and what I played was one, two, You'll notice in the tablature there on the second beat, I'm cutting it short. One, there's a staccato dot there, which means we're gonna try to kill it a little sooner. One, kill it right there. But what I would do, once you get familiar with the song, I would do things like. And it just sounds a lot more interesting that way. But this arrangement, we're just trying to make it simple. And then you can always do variations later, especially on a song that's a traditional old folk song, as opposed to something some composer wrote where you're kind of stuck I guess you could say technically with what the composer wanted you to do. But here, we don't know what the composer wanted. We can do anything we want, really. So we are playing the second half of the song, which is a recap of the melody with variation. So I'm playing a full A minor chord. Alternated the bass there. So that was an interesting variation. Low E string there. We have a rhythmic variation here. We're gonna stay a little bit longer here, then jump down to this. We have an, a little sus chord sound here, like a sound of an E sus4 there, and then it resolves or pushes down to an actual E chord. So that measure is, or the previous measure was one, two, three, and one. Now we're playing E7 this way, which is a totally common way to play it. We just have our pinky on D because that's where the melody is. Now play low E with your thumb, and we're back to this. Only here, instead of sliding this up, we, we stagger them and play the G sharp first and then the B on the last two eighth notes of the measure. So we have one, two, three, and one. This measure is the same as before. And again, we have that A minor thing. Jump on those open strings. We have this little F chord. Let your pinky take you up to this D minor while doing a half bar. Jump over to A minor. D minor chord. Little E chord. And the ending is, here you can use your index finger and slide it up to get this A minor chord, or you could use the ring finger that you already had down. That makes sense to slide it down and then do this, or I suppose you could also go like this. Whatever gets you there more smoothly, there's so many different ways to do this. All right, that's Tune Balalaika. I hope you like the song. There are so many fun things to play on nylon string guitar. It's absolutely ridiculous. If you like my videos, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to become a member of my Versatile Guitarist Academy, you can get all my tabs and all my courses. And be sure to check out my free right-hand technique workshop below this video.